Yo, what's going on guys, Tanmay F and in this video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at what is the document object model and understand how it enables JavaScript to perform the client side manipulations that is to change the HTML tags, to change their attributes, to add certain effects, to perform validations and whatnot. So it is really important that we understand what exactly is document object model and what exactly does it facilitate or help us achieve. So in this video, we're gonna be taking an extensive look at the document object model. So with that being said, let's get started. So when we actually start off with web development, that is developing a website right from the scratch, there are three main aspects to a very basic website development scenario. So we have HTML, which is hypertext markup language. So this HTML adds structure to our web documents, you know, so whatever website you design, you have HTML tags, which actually design the structure. Okay. So we use tags such as division tag, section tag, heading, title, and all those HTML markup language tags. So now HTML is not a proper general purpose programming language because you cannot use if else, you cannot have inheritance, you cannot have the object oriented properties. It is just a markup language, which is not exactly a programming language, but it is used just to give structure to our web document or website. The next thing that comes here is CSS, which is cascading style sheets. So this CSS enhances the HTML by adding styles to our web pages. For example, color, border, margin, image, positions, etc. And all these things can be handled in a separate file, which is cascading style sheets, or it can also be embedded in the same HTML file. There are two, three different ways in which we can use this cascading style sheets, but then you get the idea, right? In order to add certain design aspects and add certain styles, we use the CSS. And lastly, the third part that is JavaScript, which actually adds programming to our web pages. So using HTML and CSS, you can definitely develop a complete website, but then to add certain functionality, for example, if you have a button, when you click on that button, something should happen, right? So that function can be added by using JavaScript, or let's say you have a form and you type in your name and instead of name, you type in some number. So you want to perform validations that you cannot enter number in your name section, right? So those kind of functionalities on the client side can be performed using JavaScript. So when we combine these three things, you get a complete client side website, which has proper structure by HTML, which has styles, which is added by cascading style sheet CSS, and which also has client side functionalities like validations, effects, events, etc. using JavaScript. Now the question arises, how does JavaScript interact with HTML document? Now JavaScript is a programming language, right? It is a scripting language, which is embedded in the HTML document itself, or you can have a separate file, which we'll see in further videos. But then the question that arises is how does JavaScript understand the HTML markup language? So this is where that document object model comes into picture. So let's take a look at a typical HTML document and let's see a little bit of HTML markup language. Okay. So as you can see on the left side, we have a HTML document. And if you have even 1% of HTML knowledge, which is the prerequisite of this entire course, you can definitely understand this because it is a very basic HTML document. So we have our HTML tag over here. So opening HTML and closing HTML, then inside that we have head tag and then head tag closes. We also have body tag opening and body tag closing. Now inside the head, we have our title tag and then we have certain text, which is my title and the title tag closes over here. Similarly, inside the body, we have heading tag H1. We have one division with ID div one. We have another division with ID div two and inside those individual divisions, we have paragraph tags. Okay. Now this is very basic. In fact, let me just actually show you the actual code and we'll also see this code on the browser, how the web document looks. Okay. So as you can see on the right hand side, we have the actual HTML code and this is visual studio code editor. We are going to be using this. I'll talk about this in next video when we actually start off typing with the code, but as you can see, we have our index.html file and the same file is actually running on the browser. You can see file users and then the entire directory. And as you can see, we have our title, my HTML document. So this is that title. Then inside the body, we have our first heading H1. So you can see that heading is written. So this is a text. Then we have individual two divisions, which of course cannot be seen, but inside those we have paragraphs and the first paragraph we have P tag one. So that's visible over here and P tag two. So this is visually what I wanted to show you. Now let's get back to the digital blackboard again. Okay. So now that you've seen the actual HTML web page load on the browser. Coming back to our original question, how does JavaScript understand this HTML document? So this is where that document object model comes into picture. And let me show you that DOM entire model. 
Okay, so what happens is when the HTML document is loaded in the browser, corresponding to that document, another representation of that document is created, which is known as the document object model, aka DOM. Now this JS view represents something I'll tell you. So what happens is each of these tags, that is HTML, head, title, are correspondingly represented as objects in the document object model. Hence the name object model and since it is a document, you know, this is a HTML document which is loaded onto the browser, right? And corresponding to this, we have another representation which is the DOM. So that's why it's a document and each of these tags are represented as objects. So that's why document object. And since there is a hierarchy, you can see that the entire HTML document comprises of a hierarchy, right? We have HTML, which is the top node. Inside that we have head and body. Inside the head we have title and then inside the body we have again h1 first division and second division. So there is a proper hierarchy, right? We also saw that in the code indentation. So similarly, the same hierarchy is also created over here in the document object model and hence the term model. So comprising of three words document object model is basically just a representation of the same HTML document in a different format. Now the reason why we require a different format is because JavaScript can easily interpret this format. JavaScript cannot understand this tags, but JavaScript can easily understand these objects. So this is where JavaScript can now actually use these objects to manipulate their attributes. Since both these things are one and the same thing. So there is no separate document. It's just a different way of representing JavaScript can now access each of these objects using different functions, which we'll of course see in future videos. And then you can manipulate each of the attributes of these objects. For example, if you want to change the text inside the title, you can easily access this title object in JavaScript by accessing the document object model. And then you can change the text inside the title. Similarly, you can change the size. You can add color. You can add background to heading tag to division to paragraph. You can change the text. You can hide the text. You can animate the text and you can do everything on this document object model using JavaScript. So the way it works is JavaScript looks at this document object model in terms of nodes. Okay. So the concept of nodes is used over here and there are many nodes, but primarily we are going to be looking at three different types of nodes. So let me just show you what these nodes are. So these are the three different types of nodes. Number one is element node. So this is number one. Number two is attribute node. This is number two and number three is text node. So again, a little bit of hierarchy is going on over here. You can see that at the top level, we have the element that is the tag itself, right? So the head tag, which is over here in HTML format is represented as an object over here. So everything in rectangular boxes is represented as an object. And for those who don't know object oriented programming or who have never even studied object oriented programming, basically an object is something which has an attribute as well as a method or function, which can operate on that attribute. Even though it sounds vague, you'll understand it when we actually go ahead in the programming part. So don't worry about that. So yes, this yellow box is the element node. The next in hierarchy is the attribute node. So now you can see that in the HTML form, this division has an ID of div one, right? We have given this ID div one. So this ID is basically the attribute of that division. Even in HTML, we call it as attribute, right? We have ID, we have class, we can add style and so on and so forth. So these are the attributes. So this attribute node corresponds to this ID and using this attribute node, JavaScript can access this ID to access this element and then perform manipulations. And the last node is the text node, which is basically the content inside the element. So in this case, in this blue box, you can see that this my title is actually the text inside the title tag, right? So this title is an element because it is a tag over here, but inside that tag, you can see that we have some actual text. So that's why you can see this my title is not actually inside a square box because it is not an object. It is some attribute or you can see it is a property. It is a value, right? So you can change this my title using JavaScript by accessing the text node. So these are the three basic nodes that we're going to be dealing with when we actually try to manipulate the DOM objects. So you can call them as DOM objects because JavaScript looks at HTML document in this document object model form only because it can only operate on objects and it cannot directly access these tags. So yeah, this was it for this video. I just wanted to talk about document object model because this is a very fundamental topic, which if you are a beginner, you definitely need to know and you need to know how JavaScript actually looks at a HTML document and how it performs manipulations using different nodes. 
So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. In the next video, we'll actually set up our environment. We'll install certain softwares and we'll run our first code. But this theory was very essential before we actually get into the practical part. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, you can put them in the comment section. Let me know how this video was. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.